Hi, I'm Don, and this is The Hobbyist Geek. Today, after yet another shipping delay, we finally have the next set in the Ghostbusters Ecto-1 series. We have issue 6 right here, and we've got our parts. Uh, and this particular shipment comes with another bonus. We have this uh, cool cap, and we'll take this out and show you on camera what it looks like. Uh, this actually looks awesome. I'm hoping to be able to wear this, but uh, we've got everything we need So why don't we take it open and see what we got? All right, so here are the parts that we have for this particular issue It looks like we're gonna be continuing on with the front suspension on the right side uh, We have the right tie rod lower suspension arm shock absorber uh, we've got the uh, uh, shaft uh, upper suspension arm uh, lower and upper steering knuckles, the coil spring, uh, this rubber bumper, which I hope goes on easier than the last one did, uh, some mounting brackets, uh, the steering knuckle, uh, backing plate and uh, brake drum and a whole bunch of screws. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you get this awesome little cap here. Uh, I do like, I mean, it's a pretty standard baseball cap, um, kind of thin. Uh, definitely looks like uh, uh, not one of the, the highest quality caps and, and uh, this Ecto-1 thing on the front really just kind of feels like it's a sticker that was placed on there. I'm a little worried that this is going to peel off at some point. So I don't know about actually wearing this too much uh, or throwing it in the washer, but uh, uh, all in all, I mean, a nice little free gift. So we're going to begin by building the uh, lower suspension arm and you know, we're going to take the lower suspension arm here and we're going to take uh, this suspension knuckle and we're going to make sure that we have this oriented properly. Uh, it looks like it's going to be like this with this tab coming out uh, towards uh, the bottom here. And then this has got a little post on it. So that's going to be facing up, and it's going to go just like this. And we're going to put two EM screws on one on either side. All right, whoo, that was tougher than it looks getting that alignment just right. But if you do, those screws should be nice and tight, and this should be able to flop around just like that. Next up. The rubber bumper, the bane of my existence from the last one. Now according to this, I'm going to slide that into this little slot that's right here, just slightly keyed. Goes in, and then we use a GP screw from the other side to hold it in place. So, you know, the good news is this went in a lot easier and it actually used the correct screw, the GP screw, to do it. Um, just have something to hold this tight because this wants to keep twisting as you're turning the screw in and it makes it really difficult. Next up, we're going to start building the upper suspension. So uh, we're going to take uh, uh, the uh, upper suspension arm here and the upper suspension knuckle. And we're going to put that in and we're going to attach it with two EM screws. And if you take a look, this is pretty even, so it doesn't really matter which direction it goes in. <laughs> okay, that one went in really, uh, really easily, actually. Uh, next up, we're going to be taking uh, the shaft and we're going to throw it into uh, this section of the upper suspension. So we've got our shaft here. You'll notice there are two pipes facing down and that's the way we want to have them. Here you've got a hollow side and then you've got a solid side and there's an R stamped on it. This is going to be facing down. These two pipes are going to be facing down. And this thing is going to be facing 
in, just like that, and two more EM screws on either side. All right, so we've got this in. Uh, once again, got pretty tough there. Uh, so just be careful as you are putting all of this together. And we're gonna clear out these pieces because we need to make room for the frame that we built in the previous issues. And here she is. Now we're gonna start with this frame upside down, just like so. And we're gonna take the upper suspension arm, excuse me, I'm going to throw that thing in just like this. Okay, you've got these two posts here. Those are gonna go in just like that. And these two posts, these two holes, they're gonna go in just like this. And you can always look at the opposite side to make sure that you're getting it right because it should just be a mirror image. And we're going to throw those in with two HM screws on the other side. All right. From here, be careful with this because this thing is just going to flop around all over the place. But from here, we're going to take the lower suspension arm. We're going to place that in and it's going to go with uh, excuse me, the rubber bumper area facing down. And there's these two little grooves, just like in the last one, right here, where this bar is just going to sit, just like that. Okay, and it's gonna be another mirror image of this. And then we're going to take our brackets throw those on and put it in with four IM screws. There you go. Nice and tight. Lower suspension arm in place, still maneuverable. Now we're gonna build the brake drum. So we are going to start with this inner piece. It's got this little design up here. Not at all sure what that is. And we're gonna take the steering arm. We're gonna throw this thing in. goes just like that yeah we've got uh, these two screws screw holes here and we've got two screw holes here so it's just gonna line up neatly just like that and those are gonna go in with EM screws this feels like it's a key ah it is if you take a look there's a little post here and there's a little notch there so that'll line up and prevent it from turning and make sure that you've got it all lined up properly. All right, so we've got that on nice and tight. Next up, we've got the brake drum. And this uh, little kind of arrow design is gonna be facing up while this sticks out to the left. And you'll notice that there are three holes and three holes. So it should line up nice and perfectly, just like that. And we're gonna use HP screws, three HP screws to go in there. All right, look at that. Nice and tight. And it's certainly not gonna be going anywhere. Now we're gonna take a look, <laughs> go ahead and assemble this to this, uh, to this piece here. And 
you take a look over here, you, it's really just a mirror image. So this is gonna be facing uh, down this way and that screw there, or that hole there, is gonna lay on top of this, just like that. And we're going to put a JM screw right through that hole and attach it to the uh, uh, knuckle here. Well, it looks like the instructions are wrong. We will not be using a JM screw to go through there. Let's see. Not sure which screw we used the last time around. Uh, let's take a look. It might be an IM screw. Let's see. Please put an IM screw through there. Got a little bit of uh, slack. The screw head looks the same. So. Looks like uh, the instructions may be wrong. It does not look like a JM. We're going to go ahead and use an IM screw for this. All right, so we've got this thing attached. Uh, it does have just enough slack so that it turns. This is good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lift all this up. We're going to take the spring and we're going to throw that in there. We're going to close this down on top of the spring. And we're gonna push it down, flip this over, and this is gonna attach just like that with an IM screw. All right, there it is. Now, your preference as to whether or not you want to loosen it up a little bit. Um, I may do so, but uh, only after uh, we get the shock absorber in place. So to do that, you just take your shock absorber here. Okay, just flip this over again, and it's gonna go in, and if you take a look, there's a little tab there. There's a little slot. So it can only go one way. Make sure you get it in there all the way. And you can put a screw right through there. That'll be an HM screw right through there. All right, with the shock absorber in there nice and tight, this thing's turning fairly well, though, uh, yeah, it is a little bit tight. I think I will loosen it just a smidge. There we go. Nice and free. And looking quite awesome. All right. Next up, uh, we're gonna take the right tie rod here. We're gonna fix it to the steering rack uh, with an HM screw. And again, you know, use this, use the one you've already installed as, uh, as an example, just mirror image it. So it should go in like this. This post should be facing down. These two little nubs should be facing towards the rear of the vehicle and the HM screw, it's gonna go in right there. All right, last but not least, we're gonna take this nub and it's gonna go into this little hole. So you've got that post and that's right there and it's gonna go right into that little hole. We're gonna tie it together with a KM screw from the other side. This is another instance in which the instructions is wrong. We are not going to be using a KM screw. We're going to use a JM screw. So it's got to have the wide rim on it. I think this is where they uh, 
kind of screwed up a little bit and got things reversed. Those instructions are pretty bad. Eh, they'll do. Just gotta be careful as to which screws you use. All right, look at that. The steering rack is complete. Front suspension's looking nice. I think uh, we're moving along nicely here. All right, a couple little screw issues, but overall, a pretty good section of the build. Uh, steering rack is working the way it is supposed to. Um, just keep an eye out for those uh, uh, incorrect screw notations in the in, in the manual if you are building this. Otherwise, uh, I think we made some really good progress today, and I'm really looking forward to the next issue. So if you like the video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you next time. Have a great day.